Hi everyone, and welcome to this video where we'll be looking at some important properties of the normal distribution. We'll start by looking at where we can find the mean, mode and median in a normal distribution, and then we'll run through what's called the empirical rule, before wrapping things up with a summary. Let's get into it. By now we should all be familiar with the symmetrical bell-shaped curve of the normal distribution of a continuous random variable. Previously, we learned that the mean is smack bang in the middle of the distribution, right under the peak of the curve. So where do the mode and median lie? Well, we know that the mode is the most commonly occurring score. In other words, the mode is the score directly under the highest peak of a distribution, since the peak indicates the highest frequency. Here, that's exactly where the mean is, right in the centre of the distribution. So the mean and the mode are the same in a normal distribution. Finally, the median. The median is the score positioned in the middle of the data set when it is ordered from smallest to largest. Luckily, the scores in a normal distribution are already ordered from smallest to largest. We know that a normal distribution is symmetrical, so either side of a line down the middle, we have mirror images. We have the same number of scores on either side. So this means that the median is right here in the middle of the distribution as well. So essentially, the mean equals the mode, which equals the median. And these are all found right in the center of the distribution, under the peak of the curve. All right, let's move on to see what the empirical rule is. If we have a normal distribution like so, we know that the area under the curve is the probability of randomly obtaining a specific value within a range of values. Now, since the curve rises highest closer to the mean, values closer to the mean are more likely to occur than those around the tails. For example, the probability of x being between a and b on this normal distribution is shown by the shaded area c here. We could write this as so. In order to actually calculate the probabilities associated with particular intervals like this, we often need technology or a table of values. But what the empirical rule gives us is a set of intervals for which we do know the probabilities and that we should learn off by heart. Let me explain. On the x-axis, we'll need the standard deviations of the scores from the mean. So where the mean is, we'll have zero standard deviations, since the mean is zero standard deviations away from the mean. As we go to the right, we can be one, two, three, or four standard deviations above the mean, and so on. And to the left of the mean, we can go one, two, three, or four or more standard deviations below the mean, which is why they're indicated with negative standard deviations. Now, the empirical rule has three parts. The first says that approximately 68% of all observations in a normal distribution lie within one standard deviation either side of the mean. Graphically, that means that 68% of the values lie between these boundaries. In other words, most of the values lie in this area. The remaining 32% of the values lie in the tail ends of the distribution. Because the distribution is symmetrical, 34% of the values are in each of these slices in the middle, while 16% of the values will lie here, and 16% of the values will lie here. The empirical rule secondly says that approximately 95% of all observations in a normal distribution lie within two standard deviations either side of the mean. So 95% of the values lie between these two boundaries. As you can see, it's very probable that if you randomly choose a value in this distribution, it will be in this area. Again, the remaining 5% of the values are split into the tail ends of the distribution. So 2.5% of the values will lie in each tail. Finally, approximately 99.7% of the observations lie within three standard deviations of the mean, which is represented by these boundaries. So if you were to randomly select a value from the distribution, it's almost certainly within three standard deviations of the mean. The remaining 0.3% are again split in the tail ends. So 0.15% of values lie in each tail end past three standard deviations from the mean. So that's why you might also see the empirical rule being called the 68, 95, 99.7% rule, because these are the percentages that lie between one, 
two or three standard deviations either side of the mean respectively. Okay, so I've sorted everything we've just been through all onto one graph. You can see the probability of an observation being in each of these sections. But of course, just remember the numbers 68, 95 and 99.7 and knowing that they relate to one, two or three standard deviations on either side of the mean. We can use the symmetry of the normal distribution to then figure out these exact slices. You might be wondering why this is helpful. These empirical rules give us a way of answering questions such as what is the probability of obtaining a score within one standard deviation either side of the mean? With what we know, we can quickly answer this question and say that there is a probability of 0.68 or a 68% chance of getting a score that is within one standard deviation above or below the mean. So let's wrap this up. In this video, we saw that in a normal distribution, the mean is the same as the mode, which is the same as the median. And all of these are found in the center of the distribution, directly under the peak. Then we saw that the empirical rule, or the 68, 95, 99.7% rule, says that 68% of all observations in a normal distribution lie within one standard deviation of the mean. 95% of all observations in a normal distribution lie within two standard deviations of the mean. And 99.7% of the observations lie within three standard deviations of the mean. Just remember these three numbers, and using the fact that the normal distribution is symmetrical, we can figure out these other numbers that we can see here. That's it for this video. See you soon.